and welcome. This is J.D. Schmidt here, and uh, the, today we've got a great opportunity to uh, talk with Lex Ross, president of product development at Aquila. Uh, this is a brand that you've conceived based on your industry experience and successes, Lex. Uh, if you would, tell us a little bit about your background and where you came from. Yeah, hey, J.D., uh, pleasure to be here, and uh... Um, yeah, I'm going to be looking forward to talking about Akiva and uh, been been a fun fun ride. So happy to share it with folks. So, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, just you know, my background is basically uh, born born and bred in South Africa. So um, started sailing, boating. I did my first sailboat race when I was four years old. So I've been uh, pretty much in boating all my life. Uh, I did. Uh, Grew up doing rowing, so you know, crew boat and things like that. Lots of sports and from 15 until now. It's, it's scary to think how long that is, but that actually puts me this year at uh, 50 years in uh, in in the in the boating industry. So, <laughs> so long I've been history. Around a while. <laughs> Catamarans. I you know I, I messed around as a kid, as a very young kid, probably 10 years old, with putting little electrical airplane motors on little car catamarans that I. I built and figured back then that I mean these things, this little boat that I built was fast, 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 and I, you know, I always. Then I got into you know Mona Hull sailboat racing, did a lot of that, went to various world championships and a few things like that. But also sailed uh, the old Shearwater Cats and Flying Kittens and Tornado when that first came out, and then also a couple of power boats, which was the old Hydrofoil Power Cats. Uh, well hydrofoil power boats, which was fundamentally a, a, a catamaran, really, because it just ran on two little sponsons. Um, right, right. But, you know, just, I was always impressed with the performance of that, but I was sort of locked in the sailboat game somewhat. Um, and then uh, I, I worked, I imported Beneteau boats into South Africa, actually, at one stage as well. And then I ended up working for Beneteau in France and um, also helped set up their factory in um in the uh, US um, and uh, sort of, yeah, headed up the whole product development. So I moved my family to France, then to the States. So, you know, that's other pretty cool thing, sort of experiencing the boating industry in different uh, different continents, definitely different thoughts, you know, sort of uh, thoughts on what good boats are and, you know, what boats should be. So, but I ended up after Beneteau, I'd, I'd built a very good relationship with the, the folks at the moorings which is um you know at the time was the biggest uh charter boat in this uh, charter boat company in the world and got to know charlie carey actually very well and um he was the founder of the moorings and then i ended up joining moorings in florida we you know from benito i was selling boats to them um and then ended up working for moorings where i ended up being ceo for quite a number for about 10 years. But in that time, when I joined the moorings, I realized everything was about minor holes at that stage. And really, um, my passion for catamarans, I had the ability to really sort of sit back and say, and you know, moorings wasn't the first boat with some cats. They actually had some catamarans already, but the, what really attracted me there was the more I spoke to folks about, you know, particularly customers that had been out and that, and they, they sort of loved the cat, but there were a lot of things that they really didn't like about it as well. So I did quite a lot of work on that initially, and then I said, okay, I, I can figure this out. Is um, you know, I mean, fundamentally, the cats they had engines that were too small. Um, they had the galley down in the hull. You know, they had the main sheet traveler in the cockpit. They're not really people friendly, I would say. You know, typically on a charter right. boat, you would be, you know, you'd be out with a with a family, maybe one or two folks that can sail, and the rest can't sail. They're there for a vacation. You know, they're just gonna. So, so you want a platform that really works out super, super well, and uh, so that's where I ended up uh, developing the Leopard brand with Robertson and Kane and John Robertson, a buddy of mine in South Africa. I actually tried to get various big companies, including Beneteau, to start building catamarans. Um, and they actually all said to me, oh, there's no future in catamarans. And this was in the uh, early 90s. And I said, well, there is a big future in catamarans. So um, 
any case, nobody would build them for us. So I ended up calling my buddy in South Africa, John Robertson, and we developed the uh, first boat was the Leopard 45, which was known as the Moorings 4500, got boat of the year. And that's what started transforming the entire charter boat industry um, to being predominantly catamarans now. But those were the very first steps. So it wasn't that I was the first one with a catamaran in charter, but I was the first one to really understand what customers wanted on a catamaran. And it wasn't about the speed, although cats with speed is about the comfort. And, that, first, um, uh, that first catamaran you're referring to, that was a sailboat still or a power cap? I yes, think. yes, that was that was a sailboat. So, so I'm sort of coming around along, you know, <laughs> around to this. Well, some of the, we then started a brand when I was CEO of Moorings called um, Nordic Blue, actually, and we put some monohull power boats in there as charter boats. And we had a lot of problems with them um, because of the, the props, the high horsepower, not a lot of cabins, you know, not that comfortable. And when the engines were down, we took some power boaters and we stuck them on the sailing cats and said, just don't worry about that mast sticking up at the top there. Just, just don't worry, don't put the sails on, just motor it around. So these are power boat customers and they came back and they said, man, this is, this is the best vacation we've ever had, you know? So, you know, you get to understand that. So we started then developing, basically taking sailing cats and converting them to power cats, which basically meant taking the mask off and leaving everything pretty much the same, changing a couple of things. Um, and that took off in the chart, and that, that's how the charter power people started getting into the charter industry in the Caribbean.